And then coming up next, we have Robin Wolf coming into the room. Our psychic medium, Robin, coming from North Carolina. Hey, Sherry. Hey there. Robin right. today is going to be talking about the continuity of life through the evidential mediumship. She is an international evidential medium and psychic, pet communicator, past life regressionist, cord cutting, and does cord cutting ceremonies. She also teaches various psychic development and mediumship workshops in Asheville and, 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 and Northville and Asheville and on Zoom. She does um, mediumship, communication, animal communication, doodling, artwork, which really intrigues me, which is cool. And she's an awesome medium. She uh, did a session on me the other day, and we talked to my mom and my grandma. And uh, she really confirmed, and um, she's a real deal, guys. So and enjoy what she has to offer, and um, we'll open it up to a little bit of time, and however she wants to take it, whether she opens it up to the um, for Q&A or follow her to her room. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be here. Um, so as Sherry mentioned, I'm an evidential medium. I've been doing this, I guess, all my life, but I've been teaching and doing readings for the past 15 years. Um, I studied under the UK mediums, um, Janet Nohavik, Brian and Simon, Stella Upton, Paul Jacobs at Arthur Finley College in the UK. And, um, and yes, I live in Asheville um, from New York City. And um, I moved to Asheville about a year ago. And uh, most of my readings right now are on Zoom due to COVID, I guess. And um, hopefully I'll be going, I'm starting to go in person in Asheville. Um, but I'm still doing a lot of readings on Zoom and also by phone. So for those of you who don't know what an evidential medium is, um, so an evidential medium serves as an intermediary between those of us souls still walking around in a physical body and those who've shed their body during the transition that we call death. Um, an evidential medium re reunites family members with lo the loved ones they thought were gone forever. And for me, it's a very sacred experience to be speaking to the spirit people in the spirit world. Um, it could be very healing. And um, I, it, an evidential medium, just like healer, um, is a conduit so the spirit people can speak through us. So the evidential medium, and I keep saying evidential because there's a difference between a psychic medium and an evidential medium. A psychic medium is connecting with your aura and your energy. An evidential medium is actually connecting with the spirit communicator. And the evidential medium is able to tune in to the higher vibration of the spirit world to be both the receiver and the transmitter for those people in the physical world who can't perceive the spirit world's frequent frequencies. So the spirit people, the spirit world, um, their vibration, the people in the spirit world, the vibration is very high. And the people walking on the earth plane, the vibration is very low. Um, so the evidential medium has to raise their vibration in order to connect and communicate with the spirit people. It's what I try to do is to provide a body of edit of evidence that I'm communicating with the other side. I want my client to be convinced that I have brought through their departed loved ones that I've connected with them. I won't ever say your mother is here and she loves you because it's all about the evidence. I pass along the details and the messages that, that so there are you know, messages and details that there is no earthly way I could have known. So the reading itself should feel like a phone call from heaven. The medium will paint people back to life with words. We'll bring comfort to those left behind by showing that life is continuous. And we'll demonstrate that death is a transition and not something to be scared of. So giving an evidential mediumship reading 
is about helping people to get on with their lives until they meet their loved ones again. It's about proving without a doubt that our loved ones are aware of our actions and of our love. Unfortunately, I believe that evidential mediumship is becoming a lost art. Too many mediums are settling for giving less than evidence. And there's no way you can convince others of the continuity of life by telling a client, I have grandma here and she wants you to know that she loves you. There's no evidence here. And it's not a personal experience. I, in, in my opinion, mediums need to stand on a rock of integrity. We do, we're doing sacred work. We're working for the divine. Mediums aren't here to astound people. We're here, we really are here to prove that life is continuous, to prove that our departed loved ones are still watching over us and are still in our lives. This is what changes people. This is what helps people to heal, to know that mom is still watching us, to know that mom is helping us through, you know, in our, on our journey still. We're dealing with a very high intelligence on the other side. They're still living, functioning minds that know what they're doing and know what you're doing. The spirit world has access to knowledge and information and guidance that's unavailable to people on the earth plane. Again, it could be a very healing thing. They can help our planet to evolve if we allow them to. The spirit world needs the evidential medium to be their connection with their loved ones to get the message across that they're still around and that love never dies. Love is everlasting. You know, most people want to know what happens when we die. Where do we go? What is the heaven like? Will we be reunited with our departed loved ones? Life goes on forever. Love goes on forever. The material plane is where we live. It's just one level. There's so many other levels that we just can't see. In my opinion, the spirit world is right next to us. Our departed loved ones walk with us. There's the material and physical plane in which we live. And then there's the spiritual plane where they live. And we're walking side by side. Death is just a transition to another phase of our external existence. It's a doorway through a thin veil that separates us from the unseen world. And everything in the universe is energy, vibrating at different frequencies. We are all energy, but on the material plane, we're clothed in our physical bodies, living with material things. And on the spiritual plane, our departed loved ones are souls, energy, and no physical body, no material world. And we're all just souls walking this earth. Right now, we're temporarily housed in a temporary body. We have a physical body and we have a spiritual one. And the spirit body goes on, goes with us when we die. And so does our mind and our body. Our physical body slows down and deteriorates. The heart may stop beating, but the spirit, the soul is eternal. That part of us doesn't change as we age. Our soul lives on. Spirit world, the spirit realm is one of pure vibration, pure energy, pure awareness. But again, we're all of the same world. And tonight, instead of just talking, I want you to experience speaking to your departed loved ones if you've never experienced it before. So I'm going to take you on a little journey for the, I think I have 15 more minutes to speak. So I'm going to take you on a little journey, a little meditation so that you yourself can experience speaking to your departed loved one or loved ones, including your dogs or cats, because they're also in the spirit world with your other departed loved ones. 
and they're also in your world, in your life. So if you would bear with me and um, close your eyes for a moment, for a few moments, for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to take you on this little journey. And I call it the upper room, some place where you can go whenever you want to, to speak to your departed loved ones. So if you would just close your eyes and just focus on your breath for a moment to help you to start to relax. And just breathe in and hold your breath for about four seconds and then breathe out through your nose and just let everything go from the day. Don't worry about anything. And don't worry about anything that's gonna happen after you leave this fair this evening. Just keep breathing in and out, relaxing more and more as you breathe. And in your mind's eye, I want you to envision yourself getting up. And I want you to see a set of stairs in front of you. And I want you to take a walk up those steps. Just walk up the steps. And as you're walking up the steps, I want you to notice your body, your physical body less and less. You're becoming lighter and lighter. By the time you get to the top of the steps, you don't feel your physical body anymore. And you notice there's a doorway in front of you. This is the upper room the spirit world, completely safe. I've already set the intention, no spirits can enter that do not belong to you. And I want you to look at this doorway in your mind's eye and envision it any way you want. It could be a wooden door, a stone door, a brick door. Just see this doorway in your mind's eye and design it for yourself. And after you've designed this doorway in your mind's eye, I want you to open it. And as you walk in, I want you to notice that you're in this huge dining room. And I want you to take a few moments and design this dining room. It could be the dining room that you grew up in. It could be the dining room you have now. It could be grandma's dining room. Or it could be something that completely different. And I want you to design a table with chairs at the head and all around. And add anything you want to it, windows, chandeliers, pictures. And just take a moment and do that. Just design this room because this is the room where you can meet with your departed loved ones. And now I want you to take a seat at the head of the table. And I want you to invite one of your departed loved ones to join you. And invite them to sit down next to you. Greet them 
however you want. Give them a kiss and a hug. And as I sit down next to you, hold their hand. Just allow them to talk to you, have a conversation. Let them tell you what they do in the spirit world, what it's like. Ask them questions. Let them know what's going on in your life. Just spend the next minute or two communicating with your departed loved one. And as you're speaking to your departed loved one, notice that the room is suddenly filled up with your departed loved ones, with other one, other family members, friends, dogs, cats. And just allow yourself to talk to them. And just do that for a moment or two. And know that you can work out different symbols that they can leave you. Feathers, leaves, pennies. And just take a moment and work this out with them so that you know when your loved ones are with you. Now it's time to say goodbye to your loved ones that you've been visiting with and know that you can do this whenever you want. They're always available to you. All you have to do is think about them. All you have to do is call their name. Give them hugs, kisses, goodbye. Sit back down in the chair and begin to feel yourself coming back to the room. Joining the Zoom room. Stretch if you need. And I hope that you had an experience because speaking to our departed loved ones is probably the best experience that I've ever had, just knowing that our loved ones are still with us. And if anybody has any questions about their experience or mediumship, um, I'd be happy to answer. And Robin also um, is going to be in her room um, following this. Um, 
room number 16. Yeah, room, yeah, number, room 16 number 16 for any Q&A. And she'll be back in the playroom at 9.30 in an hour and a half. And she'll be doing more uh, experiential. Um, so you can probably um, have some channeling done with her at that time. Um, if anybody has any questions, you may unmute yourself right now if something resonated for you or came through. I thought it was beautiful the dogs talked. You know, um, I know, you know, they, it was dog communication when you said that the dogs, they answered. They yeah. really did. They, they heard you call and they answered. <laughs> so it was like dog light language and they wanted to have their say and I wish somebody can communicate what the dogs just said. <laughs> you know, so... It was a beautiful thing. Um, I appreciate what you said. It's very uh, touching, and I had a great session with you communicating with my mom and grandma. And I've been thinking about the tea conversation, how my gra grandma used to heal with tea, and she did. Mm. She always, always said, you want a cup of tea? And I always remember sitting with a cup of tea with grandma. You know, I didn't think about that as healing. But, yeah, grandma used to heal through her tea. <laughs> mm. So, um, again, uh, thank you, Robin, for being here. And mm -hmm. she's um, from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. She's available for sessions throughout the rest of the night. She'll be in the playroom at 930. And I believe she has a, a door prize to give away. Yes. Uh, and uh, also coming up right now in the playroom, we have a special guest, Joan Francis, um, who's covering for one of our speakers who canceled. And she's going to be talking about <clears throat> awakening the psychic ability. She's known as a Scottish seer. So she'll be there um, for about an hour, guys. So you have a good experience with her, and um, she um, is from Scotland, and enjoy her. She's amazing, and also coming up to the stage next is Raphael Weissman, Heart Thread Healer, Shungite Man, and um, an uh, Angel Channel, and we have Donna Reyna, who's a solutionary gemologist, an oracle reader, and they're going to be talking about the healing power of Shungite and channeling the angels. And um, uh, anything else, crystals or rock and roll and things like that. Okay, so um, let's put in the chat a number from 0 to 100. Um, anybody who's listening, if you want to win a session with her, you uh, cannot have won a session uh, today with anybody else. If you're just joining us right now, um, I see a bunch of new faces. I think you probably came out of another room. Let's put in a chat the number from 0 to 100, and then you'll have a session with Robin. Here comes some numbers. If anybody's listening right now on Zoom or YouTube, you need to be here. I mean, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you need to be here in the Zoom room in order to win the door prizes as well as have the interaction with the speakers up close, close and personal in their breakout rooms as well as their sessions and the um, fun room experiences. Okay, so you have a number written down? I do. I have number 31 written down. 31. Oh, Nicole. Nicole won a session. Awesome. Congratulations. Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> yay. That's great. Lucky me. <laughs> yeah. Well, enjoy. Um, follow her to her room. And talk to her. Anybody else want to do a Q&A? Follow her to her room right now. And uh, you can talk uh, any questions you may have following her conversations from the stage. And she'll be back again at 9.30 in the playroom. And um, thank you for being here, Robin. Thank you for having me. Thank you.